the president of the auto focus group of Thailand, which acts as a forum for gathering and sharing information related to the Thailand automotive industry. And his expertise includes business development for Southeast Asia, project engineering, marketing, and advertising. Mr. Kaiser has also recently published the Thai Auto Book 2003. Our second speaker is Mr. Yongguk Jang, who is the press, Vice President of the Global IT Operation Division of Hyundai, Hyundai Motor Company, I'm sure you all know about that, and where he has worked for the company for 28 years. Welcome, speakers. Now I'd like to invite Mr. Kaiser. Okay, let's see how this goes. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm thrilled to be here, really thrilled. Thank you for having me. Feels like kind of a World Economic Forum for half of the world, with half of the world present. And my favorite part, to say it uh, right away, I'm really thrilled. Um, I will try to keep time discipline. Yeah? So I'll be ready in 20 minutes, five minutes less than my code, and I give it back to to the other uh, to the to the team here. But before I start, just two housekeeping things. My name is Uli Kaiser. And if you just take your pen and exercise, you know like in the airplane where they tell you to exercise hand and feet while flying, write it down. My name is Uli Kaiser. If you later want a color copy of my presentation, you just Google me along with Pi Automotive and you will find me and I will email it to you. First housekeeping thing. Second housekeeping thing I forgot. Oh, yeah, just the, you know, I want you to take your mind off garments, okay? Forget about garments, yeah? I took my tie off, yeah, to kind of, uh, first of all, Mr. Park from uh, Samsung, he didn't have a tie, but he had a coat, so to demonstrate humbleness, I also took off the coat. <laughs> and, you know, with that being said, uh, let's start. Um, as Mr. Ko said, my name is Uli Kaiser. I am the president of the Auto Focus Group. We're a networking organization in Thailand for automotive professionals. But that's not my job. That's just a, a, an activity. My main job, where I earn my breakfast, is I'm business development manager of EMAC Group. Uh, we are Germany's fourth largest manufacturer of machine tools. And I have a little bit about that in the presentation later when it comes to practical application. Just one other question. Is my English okay or should I go slower? I tend to get excited while I speak and then I'm too fast. Or can you follow me? Great. Okay, so welcome. Now let's use the remote control. Let's. Agenda. So, in part one, I want to talk to you about the Thailand Automotive Super Hub. You might have heard before that Thailand is the automotive hub, right? For Southeast Asia. Some of you might have heard it before. I say it's the automotive super hub. It's the next coming sensation, and I want to tell you why in the first part of the presentation. And in the second part, you know, I want to talk to you about how our German company, who has huge market share in the Western market, now tries to go into an emerging market. And I think that's applicable because it's kind of the other way around for you guys, right? You try to find a hold of with multinationals, with Western companies, in order to get foreign direct investment, which comes from developed companies most of the time. And for us, it's the opposite. We're the super developed technology guys, but we want to get a foothold in emerging markets. So maybe that's relevant. Okay, so part one starts. Next slide, please. All right. Thailand. Thailand has been known for as a great holiday destination and rice producer and palm oil producer and also as the automotive hub, but the numbers were never really big. In 2012, Thailand broke for the first time into the top ten of the automotive producers. Two and a half million cars produced. That's the only thing I want to mention with this one. And now I want to talk to you about the automotive industry. So next, 
things click again. So, look at this dramatic slide. And now stop. I'm not clicking. So, oh, you clicked. Okay. It doesn't matter. You remember, China is the big, the, the big kicker in automotive. They went from something like 3 million 10 years ago to now 18 million. They're a sensation. The other big countries of origin are America, right? GM and Ford, then Japan, Toyota, and Mitsubishi, etc. Germany, yeah, with all the brands I don't need to mention yet. And Korea, our host country, with Hyundai and Kia, who also have kind of done a sensational development over the last 10 to 15 years. Now, Thailand, how does Thailand fit into this? Thailand fits into this as a production base for all of them theoretically, but practically right now only for the Japanese and for the Americans. So the only thing you need to remember is when we talk about Thailand, the automotive super hub, which is the motto of the presentation, we are a manufacturing base for the Japanese. 90% of what we make are Toyotas, etc. You will see it later. Uh, let's talk about the ASEAN market for a moment. You see. Malaysia, Singapore is not on here, but Malaysia is leading the way with about 300 vehicles per 1,000 people. Thailand is in the middle, but will follow. Then we have Indonesia with 40, more than China right now, just imagine. And then India, just for reference, with 9 vehicles per 1,000 people. Next slide, please. Now, as I mentioned before, Thailand has now broken to the top 10. And that's top 10 in the overall uh, production. With commercial vehicles, Thailand is already the third largest producer on the planet. Now, I think that's, a, that's, that's something special, right? For, I mean, who would, who would have known that? We're number three in the world after USA and China with 1.5 million cars. And I think everybody in the room will know what these cars are. They are pickup trucks. Next slide, please. So, uh, what's the history? Yeah? The history is a history of growth. We've been doing about 800,000 units 10 years ago. Now we are at 2.5 million. That means we were able to grow the production by 300% over 10 years. Half of it is for export. That's also please very memorable. All other countries in ASEAN produce for their local market. Indonesia sells more cars domestically than they produce. They have to import to supplement. With Thailand, it's the opposite. We ship half of our cars out to Australia, to New Zealand, to the Middle East, anywhere where the people like to drive on the left hand on the road and have the steering wheel on the right side. Next slide, please. Okay, so 2012, uh, that was our bumper here. One more click, please. And what this shows you is that, you, that we had a year-on-year -year increase of about 68% from 2012 to 2011. We had a big flooding happening in 2011. We had the, actually had two big disasters. One was the uh, Fukushima earthquake, the other one was the flooding. Honda was wiped out. So we did only 1.5 million and miraculously recovered in only one year. Next slide, please. Now, this is, okay, keep going, no, that's fine, that's fine. So what is the future? Everybody's not interested in the past, right? We want to know what is coming. Please back. Okay, maybe we practice that next time, Mr. Ko. Um, can you go forward, one? One, you're doing good. Okay, so the crystal ball, the crystal ball, that's my crystal ball, by the way. I'm the most, I'm the most optimistic forecaster of automotive future of Thailand on the planet. I can tell you, IHS and Wards and others, they think it's going to be about 3.5 million to 4 million, but I know it's going to be much more. The reason I know that is because of, not because I have a crystal ball, but because I just know and I read the publications of the capacities that I put in. And if I just add up those capacity increases, there's no way we're only going to do uh, 3.5 million in that uh, time span. Next slide. So, SWOT analysis time. I say forget about SWOT analysis. It's about making things happen. If you spend too much time analyzing and not enough time implementing, you will get nowhere. I think it's important to have feasibility study and have facts as a background. 
but overstudying and overcomplicating might actually prevent you from leveraging your opportunities. Next slide, please. So, largest exporter of pickup trucks. For those who haven't seen those yet, yeah, here are the pickup trucks. And okay, one more. Great, stop, stop. Okay, look at this for a moment. I, I think that's the magic. These were not only, this is not only an export phenomenon, a business phenomenon, but it's also a business. It's a sewing machine to be in the uh, textile machine world. If you run a pickup truck, you can bring your kids to school, and then you can truck pineapples or coconuts or, or pigs or something from A to B and make a living with it. And people do that. So I don't get it why, I mean, Indonesia is all hot on MPVs with seven seats to drive around the family with three kids and mother-in-law and father-in-law. But from driving around your family, you can create a lot of growth. But if you have a truck there, you know, that might, your neighbor might need it. It's just an income opportunity. So I just want to say the pickup truck, in my mind, is responsible for Thailand's growth. I have to speed up. Next slide, please. Okay, so here are our capacities. Uh, as I said, 90% is Japanese. You have written down my name, you email me, you get the numbers, I don't have to read them to you. Next slide. Okay, that's the growth that we have just over the next two years. So everyone is putting new capacities in. Honda announced a new plant, in Ratchaburi, Mitsubishi announced a new plant, Toyota is expanding capacity, so we are on the increasing Increasing trip here. Okay, next slide. Eco car, that's a good one. We just go careful. One more click. Yes, thank you. Eco car. Thailand had an automotive master plan. The first product champion was the pickup truck. The second product champion was the eco car. Right now we have six eco car makers. They have a minimum capacity of 100,000 pieces, and the cars are a success. It's the Honda Brio. Has anyone heard about the Honda Brio? The Mitsubishi Mirage, which is made in Thailand for the whole world. It's the Nissan March. These are all cars that people like. And that's the tip, yeah? Uh, for success, make something that people like. Next slide, please. Okay, that's the map, yeah? Some people think spatial, geographical. I have tried to show how Thailand would look like if it would be uh, organized by market share, domestic sales. And you would see they would immediately rename it Toyland. Toyland. And uh, Honda, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Isuzu is a Japanese country, right? You will notice there is a BMW, Tata, Proton, and Kia in the south, yeah? almost invisible. And yeah, and, and no, no, no real big uh, uh, German initiative, no real big Korea initiative. I don't get it. I don't know why Hyundai doesn't have a factory there doing the I 10 or something. It would be a success, I'm sure, Volkswagen. Build seven new factories in China, China right now. Seven, none in Thailand. Next slide. So people, okay, that's the people thing. Uh, ASEAN, 600 million people in ASEAN, and then ASEAN plus six, three billion people. Huh? Next slide, please. <coughs> And Thailand's smack in the middle. Global reach, actually right now, there's already no market that's being touched by Thai exporters. But, stay on this one a bit, the Europeans, except for me, are still unsure does Thailand even make cars. That's true. You wouldn't believe it. They don't know. Now they actually have to know, because now we're in the top 10, now we get noticed. But before, we were kind of always in the, in the you know, in the holiday bracket, okay? Next slide, please. Okay. Okay, Saudi Arabia, that's important as well. I just want to show you, we are linked, yeah? This is why I think it's so fantastic that we're all here. The guys from, the guys from Fiji, from Papua New Guinea, from Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan, the Philippines. It's fantastic. This is important because we're already linked. You're probably already importing stuff from us, or you might in the future. So, Saudi Arabia, if you look at the market share, Toyota, Chevrolet, Isuzu, 
The first three, the first top three are made in Thailand. So if Saudi Arabia gets richer, buys more cars, immediately the Thai economy stabilizes. And by the way, the thing with the employment, which I had before, because it's all about GVC, how to tap in the GVC, give policy incentives so that people do kind of that. Thailand has no unemployment. Full employment, full stop. We have also skilled labor lack. And actually, that's the next. This is the only threat that I really see to this uh, marvel. Next slide, please. Okay, we we'll just go through that. Boom. Next one. Boom. One more. Yes. So the first three cars in Saudi Arabia are all coming from Thailand. Okay. Next one. Then comparison productivity. It's all about capacity, capability, and productivity. Uh, if you look in Thailand, we're building 25 cars per thousand people per year. In India, it's only three. Yeah. India could rock the world, but they don't get their act together for some reason. Next slide. Infrastructure. That's a good one. Myanmar, where are you? Are the people are they still here? Our friends from Myanmar? Hello. Um, <laughs> Myanmar is gonna this one, they're gonna be on the map so big time you don't know yet. We are building right now together, we're developing the deep sea port in Dubai, which will cut delivery times from China to Europe by half saving billions of dollars. Myanmar will be a part of that growth phenomenon. And I just wanted to mention it. BOI, Board of Investment, this is you guys, party, policy makers. Uh, I give you a good tip, Google the Board of Investment in Thailand and look what they're doing. It's kind of uh, files after files after files of stuff and they're good. So just note to self, Google BOI Thailand. Reaching out, the full potential isn't reached yet, just right now, CP Group, one of Thailand's richest groups, has signed a joint venture agreement with SAIC, China Automotive Industry Corporation, to produce the MG in Thailand. The land deal is already signed, and they're planning to go into production in two years. Next slide, please. Reaching out to Europe, that's the German pickup truck, the Amarok, very nice car from my home country, currently produced in Argentina and Germany. We hope we have a factory in Thailand soon. Next slide, please. Okay, that's the... Thai auto book that uh, Chris mentioned, Dr. Chris mentioned in the beginning, because success starts with knowledge. And if you don't know your market, you don't know your companies. Remember in the introduction we saw this pyramid? 16, 16 OEMs, uh, about 200 or what tier ones, and then 1,400 tier threes. If you do not know who they are, how the hell are you going to do business with them? And I didn't know two years ago, that's why I did this book, that's a research project that I started two years ago, and it lists every OEM, all of their sub relevant suppliers, organizations, line-up products, etc. And um, I have brought five of these books here, and as you are now all away, as I can see, is the first five people who would like to, and they are free for the taking, the other guys can give me their business card, of course. You can find me. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Okay, so now Automotive Focus Group. That's, that's the networking. And that's another success formula. formula. Encourage networking. Chambers of Commerce yeah, are maybe sometimes not the most ideal uh, networking uh, fertile grounds because the people there have a salary and they're bored and they just do it for the job. My experience is that it's not nice, but it's the truth and we're here to talk honest. Try to get industry people to form networking organizations, stipulate them, give them some free drinks, and you will have good outcome. <laughs> Our more focus group is, oh, this is me, by the way, this is, this is what, what of my proudest moment. I was invited from the Japanese Chamber of Commerce to speak to 250 CEOs of the Japanese auto industry, which are the movers and shakers there, right? So that's me again, connecting the industry, again, okay, again. So we are now, this group now has 200 members from 150 companies. And just last week we had the MD of Continental, ASEAN speaking to us, and it really works. This is our committee. And we do regular meetings that look like that. These kind of meetings, if you can organize such industry meetings where people gather, talk, this will help figure out problems. And this is the last slide on the Automotive situation, as I said before, the only real challenge is labor. We need a, a million more workers and uh, everybody is invited when the AAC 2015 kicks in to come and join 
the uh, assembly lines. So now part two, part two. My job, EMAC, how does it have to do with it? We've learned it's a Japanese environment. We're a market leader, but 90% of our business is Western. So uh, we, went, we are now there very small. Look at our, com our company is just barely a company. It's a baby company. Uh, 12 employees, 27 machines in the country. Next slide. But these are our customers. And that's an interesting, this is really an interesting story. Continental and GKN are Western customers who just transfer their best practice equipment. Apico, just one back, please. Apico, Songun are local companies who actually never ever bought German equipment before. They always bought Japanese equipment as recommended by the Japanese uh, advisors. Now they're changing because now our, our equipment is automated, higher productivity, etc., much better. And they're actually willing to change when they have the need to change. And I think it's in every industry this case. If you, if you really know you have a better product, you don't care where it comes from, you want the better product for more reliability, better quality, and higher profits. Next slide. Yes, that's just an example of a production line that we sold. That's another one. That's a good one. So Moon, a Thai company, are now producing rotors, brake discs for Mazda and Honda on German machines. That's sensational. I mean, that's, that really is sensational. And that's another line for differential case, just that you get an idea of what we so do. And of course, we are building up skill, knowledge, and uh, capacity to support it. And we're planning a showroom, a technical center. And with that, I would like to thank you to, um, to have listened to me and give me some smiles and some chuckles, some positive feedback. Um, <coughs> Please, Mr. MC, take over from me.